for another installment of uh, treating your metal hardware, nuts and bolts. So I've done uh, a couple videos recently, one uh, just stripping hardware to bare metal, um, another one uh, applying a black oxide coating to bare metal. Now this time we're going to be uh, zinc plating and uh, using a blue chromate. So. Um, you know, I watched a lot of videos, I read a lot, I called uh, Caswell, which is the company that I bought a lot of these products from, talked to them, and uh, I just wanted to just give you some tips. There's not a lot to, uh, that I need to teach you because they send you a manual that gives you every step and ev everything you need to know about doing this. But what I will tell you is before I did this, I tried several things. And you see there, I've got the uh, power supply where you can adjust the voltage and amperage. That's extremely important. I tried uh, using, uh, like you see in these other videos, a car battery, uh, D batteries, uh, phone chargers, like all that kind of stuff. All garbage results uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and that's the, the biggest thing I kept running into. The other one is just the zinc uh, I'm going to call it the zinc bath here. Um, let me show you what that looks like. See, it's kind of a, a gross yellow color. Um, and that's pretty much brand new. It looks like that as soon as you mix it up. So, what Caswell sends you is a two part uh, concentrate, this uh, zinc concentrate part A, and then part B. This one's a liquid, and this one's a powder. You mix those together and then you add uh, distilled water to that and it gives you this. So that's what applies the zinc plating. So I saw online where guys were making their own solutions using distilled water and um, salt and distilled water and sugar and you know vinegar and salt and you know, all, all kinds of weird like, solutions. I tried all of those. None of that worked and gave me the results I was looking for. So in the internet, in the end, I ended up going to Caswell and just getting the whole set. I'd already bought a couple things from them, like the blue chromate, but I did not at first purchase the uh, the zinc uh, solution here or their degreaser. Um, and the degreaser comes in a powder form, and you just put that in. Uh, I'm using a crock pot, or you can use just a, a heated, um, like a big pot you would cook in or something. If you have a hot plate or uh, a heater, a submersible heater you could put in it. And um, you know that's it. So now that I've gone with basically all Caswell products except for the, uh, the power supply, I did buy that separately. I didn't get that from Caswell. I bought that on Amazon. Uh, I'm getting really good uh, results now so I wanted to just kind of show you the process and uh, show you it's pretty easy. You know, all in all, including the power supply, actually the crock pot I bought new because I'll get in big trouble if I brought the one out of the kitchen. Um, and I would buy one bigger if I had to do it over again. This one's a little small. But uh, all in all, I've spent maybe $300 total, which sounds like a lot. Um, but you know, the hardware on these cars, uh, some of it is just not made anymore. And some of it that is reproduced isn't that good of a quality anyways. Um, and some of it, I don't even, I don't even know if it's available. Uh, in my last video, I had just a, a little picture of the, uh, the little bracket that holds the brake lines right there. So that's one that I've already uh, treated. You can see how it looks nice and shiny. It looks like new. And uh, But I don't know that you can buy these. And the ones that are on here had like uh, some rust and corrosion around some of the edges. And then the, the surface was already dull and it looked kind of corroded as well. It wasn't severely rusty, but did not look good. So now it looks brand new. Not necessarily brand new like original because it's definitely shinier, especially that, that bolt there is way shinier than what was originally on there. But it still looks uh, really nice and uh, like a new piece. And um, then I've got the OEM quality because it is the OEM piece that was on there. 
Um, what else did I do? I've done, uh, I did this bracket. So, uh, got my a throttle cable uh, right here mounted. Now this bracket did come out further and it had a, a place for the uh, cruise control cable. But the bracket came out probably an inch and a half past that. So I wasn't using the, uh, the cable for the cruise control. So I just cut off the bracket clean that up so I needed to do the treatment to keep that from rusting where I had that exposed uh, fresh metal there. So I just did the whole thing, went through the process and as you can see it looks like a, a brand new piece and it's very shiny. It looks almost chrome plated. You know it's not polished but it is definitely very shiny. So that's the results we're going to get. I'll show you one more piece. Over here by the toolbox. Another piece that you can't really buy. Let me get away from this music. So, there's only one place that I've seen where you can buy a reproduction of one of these brackets. And this is the bracket that holds the brake line down in the fender well. And the reproduction that I've found is not quite like this. It's, it's different. So, I think this is a good a good case for uh, you know trying to reuse what you have on your car instead of buying something new. Um, so this uh, originally these come primered and painted with the body of the car. It's mounted to the frame um, when the, when it's being prepped at the factory. So it gets the factory primer and paint uh, when they paint the car. Um, so. As you can imagine, if this starts rusting, you pretty much have to strip it down or it's going to rust under the paint. And once you strip it down, then you're faced with the option of either priming it and painting it and trying to bolt it and reuse it. And putting your bolt in here and, and running your brake cable through here without chipping that paint. Because once that paint chips, it's going to start rusting underneath. All your paints go bubble and crack and then it's going to, you'll have a mess. So that's why I like doing this process where you're actually... Uh, you're bonding the zinc to the metal. It's not going to chip or flake off. It's going to have, you know, it's going to last a while. Now, if you're in a northern climate, you have a lot of salt. Maybe this wouldn't be good. You may want to do some other type of treatment. Um, but down here for this car, most people with box bodies, they're not going to be daily driving them in the, in the winter uh, when you have salty conditions. So uh, I think this is a perfect uh, use of this. I mean, look at the difference in these bolts. It's night and day. So, uh, all right, let me show you how I did this. So when I'm stripping these, first thing I'll do is I'll, once I, uh, I'll use muriatic acid, which I've got out here. You see I've got a couple of bolts, a couple of nuts in here. That's for the, uh, the air box, the, air, the plastic uh, plenum. Um, keep that closed up because that's some toxic stuff there. Actually, since this has some flash rust on it, I'm gonna drop this in. And if you've got it pretty much stripped down, uh, you'll see this muriatic acid will uh, take that flash rust right off. Sorry, coming back to a silver there. So I'm just gonna drop that in. So, you know, you leave pieces in there, and this pretty much bare metal. It only takes a, a few minutes and it's good. If it's coated with uh, paint or uh, like a black phosphate or something like that, it may have to stay in longer. It takes some more brushing with a, a brush, a metal brush. These are some bolts that I'm doing right now. These are uh, just in the uh, rents coming out of the muriatic acid. So that's just a rinse there and it's got some baking soda which neutralizes that uh, the acid from the um, Muriatic acid. So uh, I'll be moving on to those next. So when it comes out of there, I'll rinse it off over there with the hose. All right, guys, uh, I had to interrupt myself for a minute. I was editing this video and realized I left out a few things that I probably should have mentioned. Uh, one is we're dealing with a lot of chemicals, so you want to wear gloves, you want to wear safety glasses. Um, two, you want to be in a well-ventilated area uh, because um, you just don't want to breathe in these chemicals. Uh, some of them are th 
three of them are heated, so there's more evaporation than usual. You know, I've got a big open garage, so that's one reason I'm not wearing a respirator, and I also have a fan going over here. So, um, other thing when you're not using the chemicals, the ones uh, you'll see out here on the bench, um, definitely you can leave the chemicals in the buckets, uh, just seal up the buckets uh, with lids, and um, that way you can carry this project on for days and weeks on end. Um, other reason to wear gloves is so you don't get your hand oil and parts. And muriatic acid for stripping uh, hardware, you definitely want to use that outside when you've got other hardware in here because it will enter the atmosphere and start eating away uh, other parts you have in the garage here. So when you have that container open, it's best to use it outside. I've got a larger container than I've used uh, in previous videos. Um, I think that's it. All right back to our regularly scheduled program. And then I'll come over here and I'll hit it with the wire brush. I've got my, uh, my grinder set up there with a wire brass uh, wire brush on it. So I'll do that just to get it uh, super clean and bring the metal back kind of shiny because the, uh, the amount of shine you have in your finished product, you'll see this looks like chrome because this is on uh, some copper wire. Um, the amount of shine you have is really based on the surface uh, that you start with. So if you start with something really smooth, it'll end up really smooth and shiny. So once I come off that uh, grinder there with a the wire brush, I'll drop it in the degreaser, and this is on high, going around uh, 180 to 200 degrees. Let's see what we have here. These are the brackets for the front fiberglass bumper, they go right here, they clip into these clip into these spots on each side and then the fiberglass bumper bolts to that and that's what those bolts are for that are over there and that rents. Now you can imagine these being on here, they were, uh, yeah, they were just very corroded, not, not very rusty, but really corroded and uh, so I went ahead and stripped those. And again, I'm not trying to restore it like to original. I just don't want to put something on here that's going to be rusty and corroding, you know, day one. So it'll come out of here. I'll give it a rinse with some uh, distilled water. Then it'll go in the zinc bath for uh, those. I'll probably do just one at a time. They'll take like 15 minutes a piece in here. Uh, by the way, they'll be in the degreaser maybe uh, 20 or 30 minutes. 15 minutes in here, rinse, three seconds, and that's 5% muriatic acid. And then we're gonna go into a, uh, a rinse. And then probably 15 seconds in blue chromate, just a few seconds in the rinse, and then I'll hang them by the fan there and let them sit there 24 hours. So uh, I just wanted to explain all that. I'm actually gonna do the process right now. I'll do uh, some time lapse on the zinc bath because you don't want to wait 15 minutes for that to come out. But these, these pieces are already ready. So I'm just gonna start here. They've been stripped. I hit them with the wire brush. Now they just have to come from here and go, go down the line. So we'll see what they look like. All right, let's do it. All right, so First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these out. Now this is just uh, distilled water. You only want to use distilled water with everything you're doing because you don't want any uh, of the natural chemicals uh, that are in regular water uh, to be in with these chemicals because it would cause adverse reactions. Not anything detrimental to your health, but detrimental to plating the pieces. So this has been in there for a while. I'm going to Spray it off. Now typically I spray this off like just out in the driveway, but the camera's in the way so I can't get over there. But spraying it over the um, degreaser will actually replenish some of the water that's evaporated. So that's fine. Right, so you can see this piece is somewhat shiny. 
on the outside because I did hit it with the wire brush earlier. Um, you want to make sure when you spray water on here, there's no water beating. You want it to sheet across here so it's nice, uh, nice and smooth, nice smooth coating. piece is ready for my zinc bath. All right, so the zinc coating kit comes with um, your concentrate. It also comes with the zinc plates, which you need, and the power supply you can either get from Caswell or you can buy it separately. Um, and they, they also provide some instructions on your voltage you need to use. Um, so I'm gonna hang this on a stick like so and I'm going just to uh, drop it in here uh, you want to make sure that your piece is not touching the bottom of the bucket or touching the zinc plates I'm just gonna set it right in there just like that so now it's just floating right in the middle of the bucket and then I'm going to connect my negative terminal terminal to my copper wire like so so now I've got, uh, you'll see I've got my red positive uh, line coming over here to the zinc plate. This zinc plate is connected with another uh, positive terminal that runs around to this zinc plate. So all that's positive. Your piece is now negative because I've got my negative uh, cable attached to that. And you want to use copper wire here to hang your piece. I'm going to turn this on. I can see my amperage is at 0.26. So that is going to be too low. Um, what I need is 0.14 per square inch. So you can see this piece. Now most of these I just kind of estimate. Um, I do have a sticky note here that has nine square inches on it. So I can kind of glance at it and say, okay, that's maybe couple of square inches, couple of square inches. You gotta count this side too, a couple there, a couple there. These edges that run down each side. Okay, that's maybe, I don't know, uh, seven, seven square inches of surface area. Counting these tabs, both sides, all of that. You just take seven times 0.14. And what is that? I'm recording it with my phone, which has my calculator on it. Okay, that's gonna be about one amp. So you just want to turn this dial, it just takes a little, little nudge here. There you go, right about 1 amp, 1.03. So, uh, and that's it. Now I'm going to let that sit for 15 minutes, but after about 7 minutes, I'll, uh, I may take this and turn it around. I'll show you what that looks like. I'll disconnect it like so. Take, I can either take my piece out and turn it like that, put my stick back in. I can turn the whole stick around, whatever. Um, and then I'll just reconnect it. So I'll do that after it when it's about halfway through. Okay, while we're waiting on that, uh, we'll talk about a couple other things. Um, I mentioned the copper wire. Uh, I just cut off these strands about two feet long. This is just some regular, like uh, home, like Romex, uh, Romex wire, electrical wire, and it's stripped. So you got those pieces ready. Um, after you use them a couple of times, or really after once, they get uh, pretty heavy coatings of the uh, zinc and uh, blue chromate. So I'll just retire those pieces and I'll recycle those. Um, what else do we have going on? We can talk about Altered Fox a little bit. Um, one thing, uh, I just, just released a video on this uh, EGR Delete kit here. So uh, this is something new from Fox Bonnie Performance that we're selling. Uh, definitely check that out. It's much smaller than the, uh, the old school. You can actually get rid of the entire EGR plug, which you see there cut off and the little aftermarket piece that you buy to put in the plug to do that delete. So big, uh, 
big saver on space, and you don't have this thing floating around in there behind your intake. You'll have this, which is small enough you can wrap up with the uh, with your wiring harness. So check that out at ultracox.com. Uh, what else do we have that we're working on? Another item that's getting ready to come out, should be in the next couple of weeks, is the uh, radiator bracket. Uh, the, of course, the radiator bracket is not the highlight, it's the uh, bolt that's holding it. So this is a polished uh, stainless steel bolt. And uh, it's nice and clean, shiny, it looks almost like uh, chrome, I don't know if you can tell in the video. I'm sure if I get close to it, it'll, it'll get blurry. But uh, it's some really nice hardware. So we're gonna be selling this uh, this hardware. And um, pretty excited about that. This is something you can't buy anywhere else. It's only from Fox Body Performance on ultrafox.com. So uh, I'll have a link for that down below this video probably in the next week or so. They're not uh, available yet, but they should be, should be ready to ship uh, maybe by the end of this week. By the end of, uh, by the, first week of June, so uh, 2021. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. Uh, this other other bolt you see here, this is uh, an anodized aluminum uh, washer on this bolt. And uh, that is from Ser Servinator. So I'll put a link for Servinator down below. He sells these bolts and all the fender bolts and everything for the whole car and uh, they use a uh, anodized, silver anodized aluminum, which is nice and shiny. Uh, but if you'd rather a more of a chrome look, um, like this, that's uh, from Fox Body Performance. What else do we have? What else are we working on? But while we're here, I'm gonna show you these. I did do the uh, blue chromate uh, on these uh, screw, the ends of these screws here for the air box. Um, but you can't, you can't submerge the, uh, the rubber piece. It's all made together in one piece. You can't submerge this in um, muriatic acid. So I had to carefully uh, strip just the bolts here, wire brush those, and then I had to uh, just put the very end of it in here, in the, uh, the zinc bath and then the blue chromate. So that was uh, pretty time consuming, but uh, you know, it came out all right. The end is kind of shiny, which is what you'll, you only see this part of it. And then the nuts that go on there will be the same treatment. The nuts for that is actually what's in the muriatic acid here. Yep, there's the two nuts that are in there. So those will be ready. Um, so it looks like a, a big, huge, long, complicated process. So then it is a long process, but you can kind of get an assembly line going. Um, Cause you know, you've got to wait on this uh, for 15 minutes. So typically when that's running, I'll be over there cleaning up some parts and getting them into the uh, degreaser here. By the time that's done, um, well, I guess, yeah, I'll drop those in, de in the degreaser and then I'll have other parts I'm working on that I'm putting in the muriatic acid. So then by the time I get those in the muriatic acid, it's time to move this over and then all the rest goes pretty quick um, all the way until I hang it in front of the fan. So as soon as I move this out, five minutes later, I'm moving these pieces into the zinc. I'm running some more pieces and kind of get an assembly line going where you're really busy the whole time. You're not standing around waiting. See what what else do we have? What's going on in the garage? I uh, will say that I've got uh, more videos coming soon. I know there's been a delay here, but now that I'm getting my pieces uh, plated, I can start putting stuff back together under here. I've got some of my uh, my fuel line and brake line brackets that'll uh, that'll be going back on, and then I've got my uh, of course my brake line bracket there that'll go on and then I can start really assembling everything. I was kind of just waiting on that uh, to get going there. All right, I'm going to put you on hold and I'll come back when this uh, zinc plating is done. All right, let's see what this looks like.
Looks like it's plated. Looks good. I mean, it's silver before. It's almost hard to tell anything happened, but as you can see, one of the copper is coated as well. You know it's working. But it does look good. It's more uniform in color. So uh, let's go do our rinse. gonna move this back and forth a little bit. Sorry about the camera there. I just want to rinse it off really good with distilled water. Sure and get your copper wires too because they have chemical on them. All right. Okay, the rest is going to go pretty quick. So you can see everything. So the muriatic acid, that's just gonna do, uh, give it a slight edge. You only want it in here a few seconds, a slight edge so uh, the blue chromate adheres properly. And uh, so I'm just gonna do three seconds there, back out, immediate rinse. Rinse it with your uh, distilled water spray. Okay, then we're dumping the uh, blue chromate for 15 seconds or so. You just want to gently kind of move that around in there. Don't take it in and out, just move it around. Don't let it hit the edges or the bottom. We'll do it in a rinse for maybe three or four seconds. Take it out. Okay, we're not going to spray it off. We're just going to leave it just like this. And now you can see it's a uh, it's a pretty nice finish on there. It looks literally fresh off the factory floor there. Brand new. So now I'm going to set this in front of the fan and it's done. several of these ready um, last night and just left them in the uh, from the cooker here and they're fine if they're in there for longer than half an hour these have been in there for 12 hours so um, a half hour is kind of the minimum maybe 20 20 minutes to 30 minutes so uh, I'm just gonna keep knocking these out uh, you know you once you get a, a rhythm going you can do a lot of hardware uh, you know in just a day or two as you can see, I've got a lot of stuff here. This is not all going to be the blue chromate. Uh, some of it I may go back with the black oxide. Just kind of depends on where it's going to be on the car. Um, if it's something that's not visible and uh, not really exposed to a lot of uh, elements, like those brackets here, then I'm going to do the blue chromate since I already have it set up and ready to go. And, uh, you know, that's it. If you have any questions on any of this, uh, when you're trying to do this yourself, uh, you know, feel free to drop a uh, comment below. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I did, I have called Caswell and they're, uh, they're really easy to work with. Uh, very helpful. Um, and when you order the kit, 
that has the uh, zinc solution and the degreaser. It comes with a manual that covers basically any type of plating you want to do. Um, it has a little plating manual. So it covers any, everything from anodizing to nickel plating, uh, bronzing, chrome plating, this chromate that we're doing here. So it covers everything. And here's kind of a simple outline of, of what we just did. Kind of breaks it down. But then there's all types of uh, instructions to go along with it, page after page. Then online they have a, uh, a bolt chart that'll give you the square inches for all different types of hardware, uh, bolts, washers, nuts, all that stuff. So you have to do the math, really. Um, although I don't use that chart online because it's uh, just easier just to try to guess. As long as you're close, it should be good. And that's one reason your battery chargers and other type things uh, for this process don't work because you have to be able to adjust that amperage and get it close to, to what it should be. If you're off by an amp or half an amp, it's, it's not gonna work. All right, that is it guys. I've talked enough. Sorry if I was talking too fast. I was just trying to get through it all. Um, it's been you know, several weeks of, of learning and redoing. And, and uh, by the way, if, you, if a part screws up, all you gotta do is drop it back in muriatic acid, start from the beginning and go right through the process. This piece here, this is the first piece I did. I've done it maybe 10 times um, with all different chemicals, different processes and all of that. And uh, all you gotta do if you mess it up, start over and go right back through. Um, so this, uh, this came out very nice, very happy with this. All right, that's it. I appreciate you watching. Hopefully I didn't uh, bore you too much with this. But uh, yeah, leave a comment and hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe so you can uh, keep up with my next videos. And we'll see you next time. See you.